Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, today is Friday, praise God. Now, this is the first Friday in the month of July, obviously, praise God. Listen, God has great plans for our lives and He is manifesting His plan this month. Hallelujah. Are we ready to make demands for our daily bread now? Let's go say after me, say, Father, today I receive my daily bread from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I see angels doing everything to get your stuff to you today. And you will receive it. Praise God. Let's pray now. Lord, we thank you for today's broadcast. Your spirit have gone ahead, Lord. And you are making every crooked way straight. Thank you for burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I began to talk to you yesterday about if you've got to fulfill God's destiny, if you've got to manifest God's purpose for your life, you've got to take fear out. Take fear out of your mind. The fear of your future. The fear of tomorrow. Get it out of your system. Praise God. Get it out. And I told you how to do that yesterday. Meditate, understand, know that he is with you. He said it. Jesus reiterated this statement, you know, when he said, For lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Praise God. He is never going to leave you alone. No, he is never going to leave you to do stuff for yourself. No, the challenge we have most times in our lives is because we do not recognize that he is with us. We don't recognize it. And then because we don't recognize this, we don't acknowledge it. I told you how to acknowledge it yesterday. Whatever news, you see, everything you get in life, whether good or bad, you take it and you turn to the Lord. Never let fear terrify. And it's so funny sometimes. It's not only bad things that terrify people. <laughs> so sometimes, you, you know, I remember many years ago, you know, I was, I was working in Kafanchan then, you know. So we, we, every, once a week, I think once a week, so we, we go to the hospital and then we minister, share God's word with them. And then we, we minister to the sick in, in that hospital. We used to do that once a week. So, um, there was this day I, I led the group and we got there and then at the lobby of the hospital, you know, those that have strength, they'll, they'll come out and sit down and while we share God's word with them. So I remember that day I was sharing on, on the instruction Jesus gave that we should heal the sick. See, and I was sharing that it's an instruction, so you just obey the instruction. And while we were there, while I was sharing, someone came into the hospital that couldn't walk. I mean, it was obvious to everybody. The person was dragging. And you know how someone is being dragged in and one of the legs couldn't even turn or, or, or bend. So the, while they were bringing her in, she was just dragging, you know, dragging like that. And then while we're sharing, and this person came in and sat down there because that's the lobby. Now. So I finished sharing with them and, and I now said, okay, now that we are going to, everyone, that came, you know, that came with us. We're going to lay hands on them and pray for them. So I turned and I saw this young lady. And I said, hey, come. You know, she was part of us. I said, come. Now go lay hands on that, that, that lady that came in walking like that. I said, go lay hands. I said, me? I said, yes, you. Go. And, and she went. And she just put her hand there, not even knowing what to say. <laughs> so I went behind her back. I said, command it. Command the leg to be healed. So she said, I command the leg to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then she stopped there. And then I said, tell her to get up. And I was just behind her. I said, tell her to get up. And she said to the man, get up. And this woman got up and started, you know, moving the joints. And the woman started walking up and down. Before I turned my back, this little girl was gone. She, and I looked at where she, I saw her running, running away. And her hands were up, you know, running like this. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. What's going on here? The person that got healed was demonstrating the healing this way. The person that prayed for the person to get healed was running on this other side. Praise God. You know, and then later I found I said, why did you run? So she had never seen anything like that before. Now it terrified her. 
what, what terrified she saw I mean me demonstrating the power of God she couldn't actually praise God you know and, and that was that, that you amazing well, now that's something a lot of people pray for that's something you know but then seeing it work like oh praise God now now this thing that's how the power of God is going to be working in, through, and for you this month of July. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, you see, it's, it's simple. Just now, now, in her own case, that young lady's case, she, she didn't know she could do that. She didn't know what to do. Now, I, I just thought the word, and then I was demonstrating it. So you teach, Jesus said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay, so say the sick, lay hands on the sick and let them recover. If you lay hands on the sick, you're not the one to bring about recovery. I want you to catch this. Your, the recovery is not going to be because you have prayed so much. No, 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 no. Your own part is to believe that Jesus sent you. See, now, it's important that we pray. Now, praying, fasting, all those spiritual exercises only makes us to dwell in that place where that thing becomes normal in our life. So it, it makes us sensitive. But you see, to lay hands on the sick and get them to see them recover, it's just simple obedience. Obedience to what? What Jesus has said. You can get up where you are, lay hands on the sick person. Why are you going to do that? Not because I want to see whether it's going to work. No, you lay hands because Jesus commanded you to do so. So you 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 hear the story of the Archbishop, you know, Benson Idahosa. He 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 went to church one day and then the pastor was preaching, and then the pastor read the scripture that says that Jesus told them, says, um, raise the dead. And then, uh, raise the dead. So, yeah. <laughs> so, he went to the pastor afterwards. He said, sorry, pastor. Did you say I can raise the dead? The pastor, yes, Jesus said so. And then he even asked the pastor, have you done it? The pastor said, no. But Jesus said, we can do it. He said, Jesus said, I can raise the dead. <laughs> he said, yes. All right. He didn't go into fasting and prayer and trying to tell God to give him the power to raise the dead. He didn't do that. What did he do? He said he took his bicycle the next morning and he began to go from compound to compound. Wherever he sees people gathered, says, did anybody die here? He said, no, nobody died. They were just having a meeting. He said, okay, he goes to the next one. Eventually, he got to a compound and they said somebody just died. He said, okay. And then he got in there and he raised the dead person. Praise God. How dramatic it was. But he raised the dead person. And he went on to raise several dead people. Why? Because he saw an instruction Jesus gave. Hey, guess what? He was not the only one in that service that day when the pastor preached that message. But you know what? He was the one person that believed that Jesus had given this command and let him obey. He wasn't doing it to prove it. He was just excited to hear that Jesus actually said he can raise the dead. And he was just about going for where to prove it. Now that's how we walk in the supernatural, see? Because Jesus said it and I believe it. I'm not, be I, you don't, you don't, when you're trying to see if it's gonna work, you don't believe. But when you go, now, you see, sometimes, listen, you are put on the spot and everybody's watching, so what are you going to do? The first thing you must say is declare. You must declare that declar declaration that is in your heart. Because like Benson, they asked him, so what, why are you looking for the dead? He said, because I've come to raise the dead from the dead. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's what he said. Because I will raise her up. Like, raise her up. Say, yes, I will raise her up. He didn't say, I want to pray and see whether God will raise her up. No, you don't say that. He said, I've come to raise her up. So you make that declaration. You, you stand before the doctor and he gives you that negative report. He's like, okay, no problem. I, I'm going to take this up. He says, so what are you going to do? He says, I'll get healed. 
Oh, go bring it down, you go go do ziggy. Just like that, yes. So what are you going to do? I'll get healed. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know, there are no doctor. Don't worry, don't worry. You've done, you've done, you've done very good. It's okay. Let's not know the problem. Yeah. So what are you planning to do? I will get healed. <laughs> Oh, they brought a bill, and I said, "Oh, you know, you, you, but you, but when? Oh, you, no, 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 be content, be content, be content." He says, "Is that what it cost?" I say, "Yeah." Okay, no problem. So, so, what are you going to do? I'll pay it. Um, yeah, sure, I'll pay. There's no problem. How we gonna pay? I said, "We've got God." He's with us. He will tell us what to do and we'll pay. That's our attitude. Why so confident? Because I know he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He hasn't done it yet and he will never do it. And I know how to take advantage of his presence in my life. Hallelujah. How do you take advantage of his presence in, my, in your life? Ask him what you should do next. So when you tell that doctor, I will get healed. I said, all right. You go, don't go home and go and start crying. Father, <laughs> of all the work I've done for you, is this where it will end? Nah, that's not the way to go about it. No, 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 no. The first thing you must do, like I told you, make sure there is no fear in your heart. And you may need to sometimes encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you encourage yourself in it? You remember his testimonies. Now, at this point, you, you are not going to be remembering another person's testimony. That's when you will look at your life and look at the history of your life and you will begin to point those periods that God came through. That's why it's important to acknowledge testimonies. I'm telling you the truth. You must acknowledge testimonies in your life. That's the reason, you know, sometimes in churches, they say, come out and share your testimony. The reason is not so that people will hear and say, hey, praise God. No, the reason is for your own, for you yourself. You see, that testifying is an acknowledgement. Now you have acknowledged it before the brethren. Guess what? You are not going back to that place. You can't come out and lie against the Lord. That he, he did something that he didn't do. You understand what I'm saying? Now, we know there are wicked people who, do, who boldly do such things. But you see, now, when we testify, number one, we are acknowledging that this thing came by the Lord. Number two, we establish it. That we are the ones that receive these things. And when you establish it, and they say you don't just testify once, you keep testifying and testifying. When God does something in your life, you testify, you say it, you say it to the brethren, you say it to people around you, you just keep saying it. Our life is a talking life, praise God. Yeah! You keep saying it and keep saying it everywhere you go to, you know, you, 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 you may be talking about football, you know, you just thought, wow, you know, see, see this guy, see this guy. Man, man, this just reminded me of something God did for me two weeks ago. I said, What's it? Man, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Whoa! Man, your God is, you know, sometimes people say, at least your God, hold him well. No, I'm not just testifying. I know I'm holding him well, but I'm testifying this because of you. You need to hold him as I'm holding him. So you'll begin to experience the same kind of results and testimonies in your life. Now, what are you doing? You're taking advantage. You acknowledge what God has done in your life. You are repeating it and repeating it. And guess what? Each time you repeat your testimony, if there were demons involved in that thing, you see, you're pounding their head. And then if there were angels involved in that thing, guess what the angels are thinking? They say, man, I think we better do more, see? Because as he's testifying, God is hearing that testimony. And God acknowledges, God knows that we are the ones responsible for this. So you know what? Maybe there's promotion in, the, in, in angelic affairs. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So they're excited to do more. The people who testify the most are the people who receive more results the most. Thank you very much. Listen, our time is up. I want to see you at lunch, our prayer meeting today. 
Now you can join us on Facebook or you can join us on Mixel. That's the audio link. And But just join us. Pray along with us. God is doing something marvelous in your life. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.